<laughs> Wouldn't even get planning permission with that, would you? <laughs> Looks like we've got a visitor. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. That's all we wanted. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> keep the noise down, lads. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around a bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know. Yeah, well, I've been in prison myself. Johnny Cash, surrounded by hundreds of ruffians and villains at Folsom Prison. Well, they all sounded happy enough, didn't they? But what about that poor chap in the condemned cell, eh? Oh, uh, hello, father. Yeah, hello, my son. I've just heard the news. They're hanging you at nine. Yeah. Have you uh, anything to say? Yeah. I ain't had my breakfast. Oh, well, no, it's nothing to do with me, you see. I'm here only to look after your spiritual needs. Mm. Oi, Walter! I ain't had my breakfast! That ain't my responsibility, wise guy. I'm here to keep your cell clean. Mm. You the, uh, the hangman? Yep. Well, wait a minute. I ain't had my breakfast. Nothing to do with me, Mac. I'm here to see you don't get your dinner. <laughs> Gwen McRae with Keep Them Fires Burning. <laughs> Not likely, Mrs. If there's any fire about, you won't see this lot for dust. <laughs> and who can blame them? Oh, yeah. Did you hear about Charlie and his missus? No, what? The chimney caught fire. Never. Oh, terrible business. The neighbours had to rescue them. Neighbours? Well, let's see, there's Mr. and Mrs. Smith on one side. Oh, and Mr. and Mrs. Ball on the other. What happened? Well... Charlie's wife were dragged out by the Smiths. And Charlie? Well, uh, he went to look at... <laughs> what kind of people are you out there today? <laughs> It's a carnival on Radio One. Eh? <laughs> it's cool in the gang and <clears throat> ooh la la. Oh blimey, I'll get her with a French here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Gay Paris, the home of romance. And what's more, mate, it always has been. I don't believe it. My first day in Paris. Here I am on the Champs Elysees and walking toward me in its own flesh is General Charles de Gaulle. Monsieur, oh, Monsieur le Président, excusez-moi, but voulez-vous stopper un moment, Monsieur General? What is it, lady? <laughs> Permettez-vous to speak as avec moi? Lady, allow me to introduce myself. Jake Edelstein, <laughs> Men's Belts, Philadelphia, PA, USA. I understand, General. You're incognito. No, Edelstein. <laughs> Don't worry, General. I'll keep your secret. Lady, for the last time, I am not Charles de Gaulle. General, I love you. Let's make tonight a night to remember. We'll have dinner and drink wine and dance under the stars. And I will kiss you and hug you and scream. Please you. What do you say, General? Alons are found there by Charles de Gaulle, eh? Wasn't he known as Louis the Nineteenth? <laughs> All around me are familiar faces. Tears for Fears, number six. Sharing the same opinion as a lot of us. It's a mad old world. Or as Plato once put it, In this age of atomic uncertainty, we must grab our happiness where we can find it. Oh, God blimey. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Rest assured, if Armageddon ever did come, the BBC would still be here with programmes like the nine o'clock nukes, come dancing, or prepare to meet thy mecca. <laughs> and of course, question time. In view of the fact that the Soviet Union has just launched 50,000 megatons of nuclear warheads against Britain, yes, yes. Uh, which will be arriving in approximately four and a half minutes, uh, what are the panel's views on Britain's future as a world power? <laughs> yes, well, there we have it, a very topical question from Mrs. Johnson there. Lord Carrington. Well, leaving the Holocaust aside for a few minutes. <laughs> Right. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm afraid we can't do no, that. No. <laughs> Francis Morel. Well, I'm amazed. I mean, we're sitting here talking about a nuclear holocaust, casually discussing the destruction of the entire planet, and ignoring the major issue, which is the appalling record of this Conservative government. <laughs> Thank you, Francis, relevant as ever. And, uh, uh, and now, Clive Jenkins, the Holocaust. Uh, Robin. Uh, my member. Yes, thank you very much, Chloe. Right oh, now. I will have my say. Yes, if you must. The point is that while we are sitting here in this comfortable studio, the average trade unionist is down a coal mine. Yes, well, I don't know about you, Chloe, but that's precisely where I'd like to be right now. <laughs> well, uh, 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 another question. Uh, uh, Mrs. Bentos of Cheltenham? Yes. If the panel only had 30 seconds left to live, who would the panel most like to have sexual intercourse with? Well, there we are, as I said. Time for, time for a quick one, Francis. Yes. <laughs> a sudden reminder of the roadshow for you from the Dave Clark Five. And I'm in pieces, bits and pieces. Oh, Min, that? Min's falling to bits. <laughs> She's a loose woman, you know. <laughs> well, there's a lot of loose living about these days. Even amongst the aristocracy. Here, are you the Duke of Draffield? Yes. Well, I want to work with you. You got my Deidre into trouble. What? No good trying to deny it. She were working here in the summer holidays and you took her out in your Rolls Royce one night and... Well, well, what are you going to do about it? That's what I want to know. Well, madam, uh, I'm an honourable man and not without substance. Uh, if this is the case, I shall give your daughter, um, Deirdre, £50,000, set her up in a country house with a nanny and a nursery, and put the child's name down for Eton. <laughs> That's providing she is pregnant, of course. Oh. Well, if she ain't Duke, could she come back next year? <laughs> yes, there you are. Life with the top set. I can't even afford a bottom set. Living on soup and baby food. <laughs> Here's a powerful one from Chris Farlow. Let the heartaches begin. I can hear the guitar start to play. And very soon they say I was a fool to turn my love away. Chris Farlow, looking ahead to Jonathan King's spot at two o'clock. Let the heartburn begin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking of beginnings, Tuesday afternoon, it's Channel 4, isn't it, eh? <gasps> what a wealth of exciting programmes they've got for you. <laughs> Here's a sneak preview. Before our next programme, the weather forecast in Portuguese, here are some of the other minority appeal programmes later tonight. At eight o'clock, Oculus Question Time is followed by Suddenly It's T.S. Eliot. <laughs> and then at ten o'clock, you can put your feet up and relax because Friday night is cost analysis night. <laughs> Big deal! <laughs> I see also there's a comedy series for people with indigestion called the Two Rennies. <laughs> and also Harry Carpenter presents a programme for hernia sufferers called Supports Night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's one for Noel tonight. Okay, Sham. You played it for her. You can play it for me. Play it. My name is Sammy Daps. A white private eye in Mumubuti, Africa. 
When millionaire Howard H. Fonsworth hired me to find him. Katanga! 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 All right, Wayne, drop my rock. Pardon? <laughs> it's Robert Shanty with a jungle queen. I must stop talking like this, otherwise I'll get a job in commercial radio. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the jungle. Two Belfast lads were out working for Wimpies in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> and one of them got bit on the BUM with a poison snake. And he says, run, and phone the flying doctor. And he run and he phoned him. He says it's my mate Paddy, he's got bitten up with a <laughs> poison snake. He says, what'll I do? He says, you'll have to cut it and suck the blood out. <laughs> You've only got two minutes for him to live. In back and he says, well, Paddy, what the flying doctor said? He says, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Number one record on the number one sound, Culture Club. As we draw stumps for another week, I'll see you in Hull on Tuesday and back in your radio here next Saturday. <laughs> Hope you join me. But from producer Ron Belcher and myself, Adrian Just, it's cheers for now and screams for later. And we leave you with this thought. The Flat Earth Society is membership dropping off. <laughs> Talking to drop it off, here's Jonathan King. <laughs>